So last week I released a video for revision of momentum at GCSE and I've linked that video in the description. You're going to have to watch it before you watch this unless you're already very confident with your momentum calculations. The calculation I'm going to give you now or the question I'm going to give you now is probably the hardest question you could possibly expect on a GCSE paper. If you can answer this question or at least follow my explanation of how it's answered and understand it, you're going to be absolutely fine. Okay, let's go. But first a joke. Knock, knock. Europe. Yeah, it's a good one, that, isn't it? Anyway, back to the question. So the question goes a little bit like this. We've got two cars and the car that's behind is going to strike the car in front and we're going to be asked, how fast will the car in front uh, move after the collision? And we're given this information here. We're told the masses of both cars and we're told that both cars in this situation are already moving. We're also given one more piece of information and that is that the car on the left, when it strikes the car on the right, it slows down from 10 meters per second to three meters per second, but it keeps the same mass. Now using just that information there, can you calculate the final velocity or the final speed of that car that is going to get hit, the one that is traveling currently at four meters per second? I'll give you a little bit of time to figure it out and then I'll come back with the answer. Okay, so here's the question one more time. The car in front is gonna get hit by the car behind. What will its final velocity be? Now, while you're figuring that out, I'm going to tell you one more joke. Ready? Knock, knock. Cows go. No, they don't, you idiot. They go moo. I'm good at this. <laughs> anyway, seriously, pause the video uh, and then press play again, either when you've got an answer and you want to see if you're right or if you give up. So this question is, of course, all to do with the idea of conservation of momentum. We know that the car that's on the left, the car that's doing the striking, is going to slow down and lose momentum. And we should know that that momentum is going to be transferred to the car that it strikes, the car on the right. So our first step is to calculate how much momentum the car on the left has lost. Well, when it was traveling at 10 meters per second, its momentum was 10 times 10, 100 kilogram meters per second. After striking the car in front and it slows down uh, to 3 meters per second, 10 times 3 gives us 30 kilogram meters per second. So the car on the left has lost 70 kilogram meters per second. But I can't make use of that information until I know that uh, the momentum of the car in front, the starting momentum of the car in front. And the car in front had a velocity of 4 meters per second and a mass of 6. 6 times 4 gives us 24 kilogram meters per second. Now I can add to that the momentum that was lost by the car that did the striking. So the car in front now has a final momentum of 94 kilogram meters per second. So from here, it should be straightforward. If we know our momentum equation, which is this, if we don't know our momentum equation, please check out the link that's in the description to this video. And that will take you to my first momentum video, um, which will explain all of this for you. Anyway, going back to the original question, we are told the mass of the car that's being hit. And we should know this equation, momentum equals mass times velocity. Well, because we know the momentum is now going to be 94 kilogram meters per second, and we know that the mass of the car is six, then I can say this, 94 kilogram meters per second equals six times whatever that new velocity is. So I should be able to rearrange that equation. I'm gonna take the six, uh, from the right hand side of the equal sign, put it over to the left hand side and it will become a divide because it's a times on the right so it will become a divide on the left and that gives me this, 94 divided by 6 uh, gives me 15.7 meters per second. If you actually calculated that into your calculator I think it turns out something like 15.667 or something like that uh, but unless we are given uh, a number of decimal uh, points to go with we're just going to go with one decimal point in our answer. Um, another good tip is if you are given decimal points in the question, a number of decimal places in the question, then give your answer to the same number of decimal places that you're given to in the question. Um, so, I hope you got that. Bye.